Don't be fooled by her beauty because what you're looking at is the most evil and cruel princess in all of anime. She's Ira Von Tarantara, sole ruler of the Kingdom of Clapping. She wiped out her entire family just like my boy Itachi. The difference is she did it just to rule the world. All of her subjects are scared of her so no one dares to stop her tyranny, but we all know how that usually ends up. Anyway, she's destroyed the lives of too many people, and to top it all off, she's also a supreme sussy baka. Luckily, there's only one Chad that can save the world and alter the kingdom's destiny who goes by the name Theo Gospel. Now here's the catch, Theo was supposed to be an evil bishop but some poor Korean lad named Lee got reincarnated into this world after getting hit by Truck Kun, and now he's taken over the life of Theo. So it's been a year since he landed in this brand new world, and Theo has quickly risen up the royal ranks to become Ira's most trusted advisor. Today he's trying to convince Ira to not destroy a rebellious Lord Belmort since he knows if she does so, his and her life will be over soon enough as he knows how this story plays out because this world is a replica of a novel he used to love. Regardless, old man Belfort gets to live another day thanks to Theo trying to change the ending, and bro has something else up his sleeve. Turns out, Belfort's daughter Clara got captured by Theo's men the day before allowing him to have the upper hand to make sure Belfort does not attempt any funny business while sentenced to life in captivity within the castle walls. But Theo might be a little sus, because as you can tell, it looks like Clara got some advanced invisible clothes and don't think that attire is the norm in this kingdom. Nonetheless, Belfort's face go pale after seeing that Theo's trump card is his own daughter, causing Theo to chuckle inside knowing that he's the real power behind every royal decision. Suddenly, Era claps her hands in applause of Theo, making him snap back to reality, but the clapping might be foreshadowing something in the very near future. Mere seconds later, a menacing aura surrounds the evil queen and the first things out of her mouth is her asking Theo if his plan was to make Clara get rice cake destroyed by her father in front of everyone. Bro then takes a moment to really analyze what Ira just said because me personally, I did not expect her to say that either so she really do be an evil sussy queen. Anyways, bro is left speechless and unable to fathom what Ira got in her head because things escalated straight from 69 all the way to over 9,000 in just seconds. To make matters worse, she said it with so much confidence that everyone in the royal throne room heard her causing all of them to instantly think of plans on how to overthrow her rule because she ain't it, chief. Nonetheless, her eyes begin glowing red like a demon lord, so Theo face bombs knowing he needs to be quick-witted or it's already game over today. As such, Theo activates Sip Mode and heads for the Queen, claiming that he has another very humble plan for Clara instead of very suspect father-daughter activities. After sneaking some compliments here and there, he's able to convince Queen Ira to make Clara a maid of the palace instead of forcing her to grab some milk from a very unwanting Belfort, so it's all a win-win scenario. Now that he's saved both his life and Ira from the entire country rebelling against them, Clara sheds some tears in front of Theo and curses him for his entire life. But if I was her, I'd rather be a maid than drink a milkshake by her dad. Fast forward an hour later, we discover Theo still by Ira's side, but she informs him to cancel every scheduled plan for the rest of the day because she feels too tired after trying to end the entire family bloodline of a noble house. She then turns around and whispers to our boy that tonight she's going to reward him for his deeds and for always being by her side no matter what. Unfortunately for Theo though, it looks like he already knows what the reward will be and he doesn't look too happy that the sussy fire nation is about to invade his life once again. As the queen's most trusted advisor, we discover that bro gets the job of being the one that helps her out when she wants to freshen up by being a bath boy. To help her out, Theo gets summoned right in front of her, but she's totally exposed like Jack Doherty and lets him see the entirety of her twin statues of liberty and let's just say she do be having some large g -yats. Bro then stares way too long when it's not like this is the first time he's ever seen those puppies before so I Ra blushes uncontrollably whilst his lightning rod gets ready to strike from down under. But the turntables turn when Theo is given his reward, which turns out to be just him being able to help clean with the queen. So it seems he doesn't get to use his banana tree. Unable to turn his lightning rod into a battering ram built for the queen, he just stands there and scrubs the targeted areas to leave Ira squeaky clean. After completing his lame mission, she flashes him a look and orders Theo it's time for phase 2 of the reward where he must eat her vanilla ice cream cone on the spot. Theo sighs knowing that he doesn't get anything in return, and this isn't something he would call a reward because it's a one-way street, but he just nods and does as what the queen wants. So with the queen enjoying his reward, Theo is busy thinking to himself how much he hates her, and she's just lucky he hasn't finished his plan of taming every princess in this world to do his bidding, including her. Regardless, with Ira sounding like a broken record that continually repeats the same sussy sounds over and over again, Theo gets visibly frustrated that he can't properly use his pepperoni to pork out on the queen, 
But since he wants to keep his head, Theo tries his best to always make sure she hits her climax of the mountain but rest be assured, he's going to rule her world very soon. To do so, Theo plans to make Ira fall in love with his sussy skills, even though he hasn't gotten to unleash his banana sword on her dumpy to deliver the finishing blow, but for now he can use his Spider-Man skills to full effectiveness. Nonetheless, Theo continues to accept his reward graciously, so he's able to make Ira succumb to defeat twice with the use of only his fingertips, so just imagine what Bro can do when he unleashes the real weapon he's been hiding. Now that Ira got defeated twice in a row by Theo, she happily tells him he can make his leave as she's going to finish cleaning up by herself. After drying up like dried mangoes, she calls a sleepy Theo to help her brush her hair so it looks like he's the one that's being tamed right now, because this isn't what a normal royal advisor would do for their queen. However, as he brushes her hair to her liking, Theo takes this prime opportunity to privately ask her for a favor and jokes on thus, the favor has nothing to do with being a sussy baka. It's then revealed with Ira's fury that he tried to convince her to add another advisor but she took it the wrong way, making it seem like Theo wants to quit being her only trusted advisor. Upon seeing her look like she's about to rip him a new one, he retracts everything he said even though the only thing he asked for was an assistant because he can't handle everything she keeps asking him to do by himself. Now that it's clear she wants no one other than him by her side, Ira quickly drops a bomb on Theo and mentions how the royal expedition is returning tomorrow. Fast forward the next morning, Theo didn't have enough time to prepare for the expedition suddenly returning so he tries his best to keep his composure knowing full well that his life is on the line if things unexpectedly escalate. But much to his horror, the royal council gets interrupted by a female knight from the expedition who's still in full armor with battle axe in hand so it looks like trouble has found its way in. Sure enough, the crimson-haired warrior swiftly sent one of the lords of the council to the afterlife with one simple slice without saying anything. After breaking rules of royal conduct without any care in the world, she removes her helmet where we learn that she's Elda Von Lioness, or should I say Elda Von Batty, cousin to Ira and one of the princesses of the top noble houses. Eventually, Theo steps in and begrudgingly asks Elba to sheathe her weapon but big props to our boy since I wouldn't want to speak up to someone that just came out of nowhere and clapped a council member without anyone stopping her. Unfortunately for Theo though, Elda feels insulted that someone just tried to tell her what to do so she whips out her giant battle axe again and aims right at him. But right before she's able to make Theo reincarnate to another world, Ira steps in and orders her to stop what she's doing but Elba just plays it off like it was just a prank bro. Fast forward to the evening, we find Theo looking like he's hating life because he's stuck at a banquet dedicated to Elga, and he happens to be the only dude there. Usually you'd be super happy if you found yourself stuck in a room full of girls and you're the only guy there, but it turns out all the girls here do not prefer boys so he's stuck in an unlucky situation. To make his evening more worse, Elga ganks him out of nowhere and singles him out the entire time so he's stuck doing what Elga wishes unless he wants to feel the wrath of the crimson blonde princess. After being forced to drink the entire night by Elga, the two make it to the courtyard where she continues to pester him and make fun of him for not being able to hold it in. However, the turntables turn when Elga changes the conversation and asks if the rumors of him having a special relationship with the Queen are true. Theo then pulls out an Oscar-worthy performance by making it look like he can't believe Elga would ask such a thing, so he vehemently denies it in front of Elga and turns it around on her. Bro then makes a good point to her that if he were to have a special relationship with Ira, then there's no way she would still be on the throne. After being reassured that he's not been secretly sticking a banana tree deep inside Ira's castle walls, the sussy turntables turn when Elda whispers to him that it's just the two of them right now. She then tries to remind him of their good old times, hinting to the fact that these two have had a special bond before, so she orders him to go along with her request, making him look scared in the process. With Theo again speechless, he says nothing but Elba keeps yapping and ends up telling him to close his eyes as she's about to reward him for apparently advising her dear cousin Ira very well. Turns out, the only reason Theo looks scared is because he used to be a slave part of the lioness family, so he's afraid that this surprise might actually be torture so he braces for impact. But much to his surprise, the only torture he's going to feel is his lightsaber wanting to burst out of his pants since Elda ganks him with a kiss which isn't something that usually happens in the novel. Mere seconds later, Theo pulls off a big brain move and activates his sussy jutsu by returning the favor, so he directly attacks her twin pyramids of Giza while swapping personal liquids like no tomorrow. However, things got too spicy for the princess of the lioness family, so she pulls back like how I like my pulled pork and stumbles upon her words, not expecting Theo to suddenly become a chad out of nowhere. She then begins blushing profusely, so she has to look away to prevent Theo from seeing. 
But then, she orders him to never do something unexpected ever again unless he likes pineapple on his pizza like a true cultured person. To save her from embarrassment, she quickly changes the mood by whipping out a piece of an emblem and asks Theo if he knows anything about it since she got it from one of the savages she destroyed with one fell swoop. After taking a closer look at it, he realizes that the emblem looks like very elaborate handiwork, but he can't really tell what it is since it's been damaged a lot so he tells Elga he will try his best to find out what it really is. Fast forward to the middle of the night, Theo finds himself alone in a secret room within his quarters that contains a special scroll outlining everything that happens in the novel, since he wrote it all down to make sure he doesn't forget. Funnily enough, after writing everything you remember on the scroll, he forgot all the details a few days later so it's a godsend he didn't procrastinate or else his fate would have been totally different. The next thing that's coming up in this timeline is the hero's appearance but since he was able to stop Ira from being too tyrannical, he's altered the timeline. As such, he heads to bed trying to catch some Zs, but he knows full well that Theo is destined to get destroyed in the novel, so he's planning to make sure he can live as long as he can. The next morning, Bro gets awakened by Ira, who wants to bring him to go see the peasants in town, but he's totally frustrated because today is his day off, but she doesn't care at all. Nevertheless, Theo accompanies her to go visit a pub since she's heard rumors that a fairy works there and since she's never seen one in person before, she's super excited to see what they are like. Soon enough, a waitress approaches them to grab their order, but instead of grabbing some food, Ira pulls out a gold coin from her sleeve to entice her to bring out the so-called fairy. The waitress freaks out at the gold coin tip because that's equivalent to like a billion Robux, causing Theo to warn Ira to calm down because now, everyone is looking at them wondering who they are. Eventually, the busy fairy comes out who we discover happens to be the owner of the tavern, allowing Ira to finally get her fix of seeing a fairy face to face. However, as Ira happily plays around the existence of the fairy, owner shifts her gaze towards Theo and casually tells him that his mere presence is very bothersome due to his bloodline. Unsure of what she truly meant, Bro just shrugs it off and next thing, he knows a couple hours has passed by and now he's got to take care of the queen once again since she drank too much at the tavern. After Ira gets placed to rest on his bed, she pulls him close and orders him not to leave her, spilling the beans that she just wants to sleep together tonight. Mere seconds later, after Theo blinks once, he realizes that the queen was able to effortlessly remove every part of her armor without his help where she then proceeded to motion to him to come close. Upon getting close, she orders him to remove everything ASAP. With no other choice, he follows the orders of his queen, but much to his surprise, she invokes Article 69, allowing her to quickly grab his banana light saber. Now to make it clear, at this point Ira has never really dealt with someone's lightning rod, so her curiosity gets the better of her causing her to just eat up the entire Italian sausage. The swallowing sound is now music to Theo's ears, so he almost cries, unable to believe that it actually happened, that Ira actually returned the favor so he never thought he would still be alive when that day came. Unsure of what to do next, Theo makes the foolish mistake of telling Ira to stop what she's doing. But this causes her to take it personally like Mamba mentality because no one ever orders her what to do. It's Jover now for Theo since the queen abruptly stops returning the favor. Instead, she stares directly into his soul and proceeds to skill gap him by grabbing his lightsaber with both hands and informs him that she will only let go if he answers her questions truthfully. First, she asked about his past life and how he ended up part of the lioness family as a slave because she doesn't really know him that well even though he knows everything about her. Now, literally stuck in a sticky situation, he tells her a sob story that he was taken in by the church since he was an orphan when he was a child, hence the last name Gospel, but he ended up getting sold to the lioness family later on. After telling her his entire life story before she was able to buy him out, Ira lets go of his prince behemoth and successfully baits him, but Brogue is worried when she spreads her wings right in front of him. In an instant, Theo's chili hot dog surpasses levels he never thought was possible after seeing the royal flaps on the bird, so Ira tells him she's going to give him a reward for telling the truth. So the reward is the dumbest thing I've ever heard where Ira makes a circle with her fingertips as a replacement for her real papayas and she even orders him to do it as fast as possible. Basically, instead of an air guitar bro has to deal with an air flappy bird and there's nothing he can do about it as it's orders from his own queen. To make matters worse, Ira is enjoying the entire ordeal without him actually getting to smash her real rice cakes, so I do feel really bad for our boy. Now stuck destroying Ira's fingers in the shape of a circle, he does it for about a minute before he began pleading with her to let him stop as this is way too low even for someone as down bad as Theo. Unfortunately for him, he should have known not to expose his true weakness to Ira, so she refuses to let him stop since she's more of a menace than Caitlyn Jenner. 
Shigun tells him that if he attempts to stop before exploding his volcano, then she's going to punish him ruthlessly. So if this isn't punishment enough, then I don't know what else she got under her sleeve. However, after hearing that she doesn't want him to stop his sussy advance with a fake papaya, Bro somewhat gets excited, so it's basically Jover for this loser. A few seconds later, we find Theo squinting with one eye, so you already know his Mount St. Helens exploded liquefied snow all over the Eagle Queen, and he even starts thinking to himself that the experience was actually pretty good. Now that we lost brother Theo to some extra weird sussy nation attack, Ira takes a moment to smell and look at the fresh vanilla milkshake her royal advisor gave her as this is the first time she's ever experienced such a thing. She investigates even further, so she decides to recruit her taste buds to have a better understanding of what she's dealing with, but then she suddenly informs Theo. There is nothing he can ever do that would make her punish him with death. So I guess bro got that tasty vanilla protein reese because I couldn't even tell if that was Ira trying to be romantic. Anyways, now that Theo witnessed Ira use her taste buds to better connect with him, he takes this as a positive sign for him to finally ask her a simple request he's had on his mind for a very long time. As such, Bro takes a deep breath and proceeds to ask her if she would allow him to quit being by her side as he doesn't want to be a royal advisor to the queen any longer. With the words directly coming out of his mouth, he makes a major mistake in asking such a treacherous question which lands him straight into the back rooms of Roblox and into the darkest prison within the castle walls. He's even chained to the ground with a massive 200-pound concrete ball, so it's too bad Bro only got the brains when he got reincarnated here instead of real power. As he contemplates on what to do with his life, he gets ganked by a mysterious figure who's lurking in the shadows, but he can tell that the hidden person is a girl due to their bombastic figure. After walking into the light, we discover that the girl happens to be Elda, but she quickly begins to laugh at Theo, while showing off the very tippy top of her twin pyramids of Giza's, signaling that the cells might be a little bit cold. She continues to laugh until she runs out of breath, unable to believe that the queen's most trusted advisor got left to fend for himself all of a sudden. But the sussy nation attacks Theo, making him not mind Elga laughing at him the entire time since he's too busy being distracted by Elda's figure as he can't help himself but stare under her plate skirts as she sloughs squats. Luckily for him though, Elga actually came to his rescue and since she's the oldest daughter of the lioness family, Elda granted her request to take him back home. With his plans of taming the queen now derailed, Theo looks super disappointed since he felt like he was super close to being able to use his battering ram to destroy her city gates and not a fake one. Nevertheless, Elda tries to cheer him up, and while stuck inside the royal carriage, she asks him the truth about why Ira banished him since rumors have been spreading that the reason he got kicked out is because he played too much Bloch's fruits. After pestering Theo some more, he ends up spilling the beans and informs her that the real reason he got banished from the castle is because he tried to quit his job and Ira was not having any of it. Upon learning the real reason, Elda gets confused since she knows her cousin, and there's no way she would jeopardize her relationship with her most trusted advisor over such a trivial thing. Unbeknownst to her though, Theo planned to get banished by Ira as he knew Elda would come knocking, and he's planning to pull off some Game of Thrones-style moves and to do that he must visit House Lioness. Suddenly, the turntables turn so Elda stands up and tells him that it's her turn to punish him now for disrespecting her bloodline. Unsure of what the punishment could be, Theo closes his eyes because Elda forces him to, but deep down, we all know he's hoping that she's going to transform into a sussy baka instead of her actually penalizing him. Mere seconds later, Bro starts feeling a five-finger discount near his banana tree, so just as he hoped, she transformed and became one with the sussy Autobots. Soon enough, the author adds blush on Elba's face so you know things are about to get serious since she ends up moving her hands right on top of Theo's bulging Titanic, whilst telling him that this is going to be a special punishment. Although they expected her to do something along the lines of being a sussy becca, Theo didn't expect her to outright remove his diamond-plated pants, while still on the journey home since anyone can catch them at any time. But before Theo could say anything to stop Elda, she reassures him that they won't get caught because this is an exclusive royal carriage and no one will dare to peek inside unless told to. Honestly, I'm all for Theo to finally relieve his banana tree plantation and after his weird encounters with the Queen, since he basically deserves getting to tame the Princess of House Lioness. Nonetheless, Elda goes crazy in this action scene to make sure Theo remembers the good old times as it's revealed that the first time he experienced his Italian salami being wrapped with something else was with Elda back when he was still part of her family. Suddenly, something clicks inside Theo's head which activates his sussy skills, causing him to take charge of the situation like a chad so he starts hearing Elda fight for air when he takes things up a notch. After seeing Theo in a different light, Elda pulls away looking like she just found out what makes her life exciting again, so she asks him what he's trying to do. 
Clearly, if she tries and starts Leo's Tesla in the middle of nowhere, he's going to use that charged up Tesla to make sure she knows what's it like to ride electric using his advanced lightning rod. As such, Theo brings Elda close and whispers to her that whatever happens in a royal carriage stays in the royal carriage so she better be ready for him to repay her favor. Two seconds later, Thea rips apart her defensive armor, making her rocky mountains come flying out like very firm jello, so it looks like it's finally time for a real one versus one duel between the two. Now that her impressive bags of lactose-free milk are out in the open like the bald eagle, she looks Thea right in his eyes and asks him what the heck happened to him because he's never been like this ever before even back then. Turns out, Theo has been spending a lot of time paying attention to his math classes since everything he's done up to this point have all been very calculated moves to make sure he survives as long as he can in this world. And since Elda is one of the highest ranking nobles in the entire kingdom, he plans to tame every princess as he's going to catch them all like Ash Ketchum. But first he must succeed with his current target. It looks like it's easy enough though as it looks like he got to buy an operator on round one whilst everyone else had a pistol since Elda is the first person he ever got to really know in this world. Now the crazy part in all of this is that the crimson blonde lion is continually emits a super loud battle cry as Theo ramps up his sussy jutsu but for some reason, no one can hear them even though this is the age before soundproofing. Regardless, Theo quickly amps up his advances and before he gets to whip out his Beyblades, he tells Elga that she can tell him to stop his attack at any time, but all she does is look to the side, before telling him to keep on going. Now that he knows the road is clear to her paved city gates, he activates some more Wizard of Oz skills to make sure her affinity towards him has surpassed her limits so there can no longer be any turning back if things get too heated. Eventually, he makes his way towards the large g yats in front of him and proceeds to slam the dumpy into position where he then combos his attack by telling Elga that even though he's stuck in the palace now, he will always be hers first and foremost no matter what happens. Elga then transforms into an Alice look-alike from Sword Art Online after she closes her eyes. Unable to handle the intense force coming from Theo's taste buds, so she looks like she's about to pass out even though his banana tree has not yet joined the battle. Nevertheless, Theo is able to make Elba cross the finish line once during their duel so she's already stuck hook, line, and sinker because she ends up asking him to please send his dark lightsaber her way. After asking him to show her how it's properly done, hearts begin appearing on her eyes so it looks like it's finally time for Theo to actually get rewarded after a long-lasting battle of him unable to whip out the banana sword. With an unamused look, he tells her that it seems like she's ready and fully prepared for his spicy sausage, so Thea readies to unclog the blockage with the biggest spirit bomb she will ever experience. Burl even goes as far as to announce that his battering ram is about to enter her royal highness, but Elba tells him to hurry up since she ain't waiting till she turns into a grandma. So to appease the princess, Theo abides by her demands and quickly engages his rocket boosters, which instantly gets Elba's spaceship going so all you can see and hear are all French love languages. After finally getting rewarded, Thea lets all hell loose as it's been over a year since he's entered the promised land, but it looks like he's trying too hard to be like his idol, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Now that he's cosplaying The Rock thanks to his banana tree going ham, he continues to raise the sussy levels over 9,000 by grabbing Elda like she's some sort of royal handlebar. Nonetheless, Elda orders him to never stop due to how amazing rice cake smashing is, so she tries her best to make sure she doesn't pass out from the sheer gravitational force his siege equipment is causing on her royal spaceship. Luckily for her, Ro put all his points in stamina to max out his levels, so Thea looks at her and smiles while telling her to not worry because he's barely even started the invasion. As such, Theo activates his One Piece Gear fourth mode allowing his special attack he nicknamed the Sussy Python to absolutely obliterate any foe it may come up against, and today, that rival happens to be none other than Princess Elga. It's show over now for the princess since he starts barraging her, with moves like the Gomu Gomu no Sussy Master which causes her water levels to leak faster than a sinking submarine, so I hope the castle maids are ready to clean up. With Elva now looking like her life force got fully depleted by all the crazy moves, Theo actually takes the time to loudly announce he's going to change positions as he's going to show her why he wants to be the Sussy King. After completing his worldly mid lane to solo top lane swap, Hearts began encompassing not only Elga, but also the entire room so it looks like it's her turn to get reincarnated into another world brought to you by the Sus Kings. Eventually, an entire word wrap filled the screen so basically you have to imagine Theo refilling the entirety of her unlimited free vanilla milkshake cup, and it came gushing out like the fruit gushers. Now that the two completed their amazing duel, Elga ends up looking like she got hit by an earthquake, while Theo looks like he doesn't have Gospel as his last name anymore. They then take a moment to recoup some of their lost energy, and after garnering the ability to move again, 
Elba turns back around and shyly asks our boy if there's a possibility of a second duel as she would greatly appreciate it. Unfortunately for her though, the turntable turns due to Theo just looking at her without saying anything, almost trying too hard to look like he's playing hard to get, but in reality he's calculating all the possible futures if he goes for round two. After two minutes of awkward silence and after some air farts, blood snaps back to reality and flashes a smirk. So now I am convinced this dude is somehow going to have some kind of demon blood within him as he's looking like a true menace. He then informs her that although the royal carriage is bound to stop very soon, she needs to make sure she can compose herself when the doors open as it's time for a quick one versus one duel. Fast forward to their arrival at Castle Lioness, Elbit gets greeted by her butler, looking like Alfred from Batman and some maid with pretty large g -yats. But before the old man can even ask her how her journey back home was, Elbit totally ignores the two and quickly rushes past them, while holding both ends of the bed onkadunks in as she doesn't want them to notice some mysterious leakage. Her eyes then disappear so she makes an excuse to Mr. Alfred that she feels exhausted after the long trip, and I don't blame her since she got to experience firsthand the amazing blue eyes white dragon. Anyways, with Elder rushing in and leaving our boy to fend for himself, the butler turns his attention to Theo, but he doesn't look even somewhat amused at his long lost return. It's then revealed that it's been three years since the two last met after the queen ended up buying him for no reason at all, but Alfred wants no small talk right now so he swiftly does his job and shows him his guest room. He also informs him that before he forgets his master, head of the lioness family wishes to see him as it looks like he's got urgent business to discuss. After getting his belongings situated within his new room, he's forced to meet with the head of the family, but it looks like he's got something going on. Upon the door swinging open, Ro gets met with a purple-haired girl getting utterly destroyed. Even with the butler and Theo now in the room, he continues to clap the purpled-haired girl endlessly as if she's an oasis and he's found the fountain of youth. Eventually, the girl collapses to the ground when the father of Elba sprouts his beans inside her garden, where he then orders her to leave the room as fast as possible without caring about her feelings. But since this girl is not his wife or even his girlfriend, all she can do is abide by his request like a Nickelodeon star from back in the day so she goes as he wishes. After grabbing her clothes from the corner of the room, we discover that Perpy happens to be a random maid of the castle, so she quickly runs off into the sunset, hoping for the Oilers to get past the first round. On her way out, she passes by our boy who bows before her, but the two say nothing to each other, and I wouldn't either, but for some reason, Theo looks unfazed at all, so he might actually be part of the sussy face clan. With the girl now gone, Theo steps forward and introduces himself, where we learn that Elda's father is the Marquis of Angmar, and his name happens to be Reinhardt like the tank in Overwatch and that's pretty funny, because he does look like him. However, as Theo continues formally introducing himself, Reinhardt cuts him off mid-sentence and tells him to stop being so stuck up like the mean girls and proceeds to tell him to sit down so they can go straight to business. Accepting his request to cut off the meaningless chit-chat, Theo drops the Nagasaki on him and informs him that by the power of the sole ruler of the kingdom, he's relieved all of his duties as royal inspector. Now shocked to his core, the fierce Reinhardt slams the table in front of him and tells him that it's impossible as fury builds up within him, claiming that not even Ira has the power to do that unless she wants to invoke a rebellion against her. With the Duke now off his rails, Theo stands his ground and alerts him that he's just Ira's messenger so please don't get it all in his pants, but regardless, Bro ends up catching strays left and right from the Duke. His aura then begins to engulf him, and as he closes the gap and gets closer and closer like it's Theo's final destination, our boy does a dare attempt to blink since his life force could instantly go to zero at any second. Reinhardt then locks in the DPS role instead of tank, so it looks like it's Joe over for us, so Theo closes his eyes as it looks like he's about ready to go back to his real world. But right before the Duke could go Elden Ring on his head, Theo uses the voice from Dune and orders him to replace Sir Fargus to become the new Prime Minister of the Kingdom, which totally confuses the Duke. So basically, Reinhardt got baited into thinking he got stripped of all his powers within the Kingdom. But in actuality, he just got promoted to the second highest rank right behind being the King or Queen of the Kingdom. It's then revealed that our boy is trying to be like Littlefinger, using the Queen to advance his plans as it was actually his idea to replace Sir Fargus as he knows Reinhardt would be loyal and he can use him as an omen smoke if anything ever hits the fan. Theo closes the deal by informing him that both him and the Queen will have a prolonged leave, so he wishes for him to protect the kingdom while they are gone, since apparently, Ira will be entering the Academy. After hearing that the Queen plans to enter the Academy, Reinhardt begins hysterically laughing to the point he almost passes out, so we now know where Elba got her crazy genes from since he's unable to believe Ira would ever let someone educate her. 
Nonetheless, Theo insists that the Queen will actually attend the Academy whether he chooses to believe or not, and he even goes as far as to place his bee and heart on the line so if she doesn't show up then Reinhardt can take his life whenever he chooses. Still not convinced Ira would actually do such a thing. Reinhardt accepts the offer anyways but he gets a little bit suspicious of our boy, thinking that surely Theo might be up to something. With Theo successfully getting the Duke to sign on, Bro heads out the room where it's revealed within the book that when Ira got clapped by the peasants, it was the Duke who took over the kingdom, so he's just fast-tracking things. A flashback then occurs to when it was just him and Ira alone at the royal throne room, where the Queen was busy contemplating on who to replace Sir Fargus with so Theo told her to pick Duke Reinhardt as he has a large army and very battle-hardened like Tom Cruise. Back to the present, Theo looks unsatisfied with how things turned out even though everything went according to his plans, worried what the future may hold since Ira still lives under his watch. As he continues trotting along busy in his thoughts, he gets ganked by Ira, but it seems like her personalities have grown even more even though it's been half a day. Just kidding, it's actually Elda looking like she's about to join a twerking contest right in front of our boy Theo, so the sussy nation looks like it's about to invade very soon. After noticing Elda's very peculiar pose, Theo's blood rushes down to his dragon longsword so he flashes his smile and asks the princess of this house if they can go talk in a quieter place. Elda instantly blushes looking like she underwent the Asian flush, knowing full well that a quieter place is code word for Netflix and chill in fantasy medieval times, unable to believe the gall of Theo. Fast forward two seconds later, Elda finds herself stuck in her armory room with Theo, so the first thing she does is to flash the twin pyramids of Giza right at our boy. However, the sussy turntables turn when Elga orders Theo to apologize for the way he looked at her earlier, even though we all know it was her fault from the beginning. Unfortunately for her, Theo ain't no pushover so he just stands there menacingly, causing Elga to pump fake him with a fake slash acting like she was about to pull a Mexican cartel move on him, with no one being able to hear them. Upon learning that no one can hear them, Theo finally opens his mouth and repeats the same words that Elga said, asking her if it's true no one else can actually hear them outside. One second later, our boy makes his move and Gap closes the distance with smooth, silky moves like Prime Spider-Man, easily taking quite a hold of Elga, before she was even able to blink. Theo then went for the very non-sussy yet romantic CPR, where the only thing Elga could mutter is his name, Theo, whilst looking like she never expected anything like this to happen. With the open-mouth-to-open-mouth -open -mouth combat now taking place, their duel takes a level up when the princess finds herself on the ground urgently wanting Theo to cross boundaries between their kingdoms. Eventually, she's able to muster some words and says the same thing that my ex used to always say, claiming she doesn't know what the heck Theo is doing even though her actions say differently. As such, all of the armor and the princess had came flying off into the far distance of the armory, where Theo then proceeded to look like he's about to become the first gentleman of Elga's life as he readies to eat his favorite meal. Personally, I love raising canes, but this man's is a real man, as he went straight for the Slurpee juice from 7-Eleven, causing Elba to find what it feels like to enter her spiritual mode ready to burst her ultimate move as soon as possible. For the next half hour, the only thing you can hear is Theo's name being repeatedly said out loud so there might be a glitch in the Matrix, until Elda finally asked Theo if he hasn't told anyone of their mischievous actions. Of course, Theo would never want this secret to be unveiled or else he knows his head will come off faster than he could think. So he flips over Elda and informs her that their secret is totally safe with him. Suddenly, just when Elda thought they couldn't escalate the difficulty anymore, Bro activates his Gomu Gomu no Mi technique sending Elda's soul straight to the unknown. With Theo's third gear now activated without even using his patented blue eyes white dragon attack, Elda begins shooting unlimited heart eyes towards our boy so it looks like she's about to cross the finish line. And so Elda finally finishes the race at the Sussy Olympics, causing a massive water leak to occur while leaving Elda outright crumbling from the intense force of the earthquakes she is currently experiencing. With a job clearly well done, our boy wipes away the mythical gravity fruit taste from his face, while probably thinking to himself that this was all in a day's work. So no problem, Princess Elda. She then realizes what happened to his face, so Elga attempts to apologize profusely for the accidental waterfall move as she didn't even know that was a hidden ability she just awakened, but Theo tells her to not worry as it's simply normal with him. With such tremendous mukbang riz emanating from Theo, Elga quickly tries to pay back all the rewards she's experienced from our boy, so she tries to start a quest that ends with Theo's banana tree being discovered once again. And just like that, the bottom pieces of Theo's armor instantly vanish down to the ankles of the Queen's advisor, almost as if a ghost was there to remove all the buttons to assist a princess of the realm with ease. With the quest completing allowing Elda to witness the dragon longsword of Theo again, the two embark on another quest, 
but this time it requires the swordmanship of Theo to utterly destroy the protected crevice of Elda. And so the rest was basically history when Elda began beaming her eyes towards Theo again. So it's a good thing this armory is soundproof or else it might have sounded like an opera. However, just when the two were in the middle of intense rice cake smashing, the butler arrived outside. Upon hearing the triple knock outside the armory door, the two instantly freeze but Elda can feel Theo's diamond sword pulsate on its own as if it was a sentient being that's currently being squeezed by gigantic stretchy walls surrounding it. Unfortunately, just when they thought the coast was clear, Theo pulls a King Arthur type of beat by unmounting the sword stuck within Elda's rock, causing her to accidentally make a sound alerting the butler to double check if he heard something. Shortly after the butler turned back around to check on the armory, his steps echoed throughout the entire palace whilst yelling out loud to Elga, asking if the lady is behind the door. With the footsteps getting closer by the second, both quiver at the thought of getting caught since they hate playing Roblox backrooms, so Theo silences any future accidental sounds from Elga by using his special full-hand jutsu. Nevertheless, the butler makes his way back right outside the armory door, where he loudly whispers if there's anyone in there whilst refusing to move a single inch as if he's got the power to petrify anyone at will. After one minute has passed, the butler hears nothing, not even the wind, so he continues to stand there and stare at the wall looking like he's got a suspicious feeling that he's felt heat waves come from behind the door. Eventually, the butler whips out a bunch of keys while saying out loud that he thinks it's strange. No one is answering back even though he thought he for sure heard some kind of sound from within the door. I mean, to be fair, the armory is supposedly soundproof, so if he heard something, this butler probably got some kind of super hearing, so he ends up finding the correct key to unlock the armory with ease. Upon squinting the door wide open, the butler's suspicions were proven to be correct as he gets shocked to see Miss Elba just standing there staring at him. Luckily, the butler finds both of them with their full suits of armor back on, so he starts berating the two for not answering back when they were both in there the entire time. Nonetheless, Elda makes up the perfect excuse by claiming that they might not have heard him since they were busy trying out the brand new suits of armor she bought earlier this month, and that they were pretty far from the door. With no power to further question the motives of the princess being secluded in a very sussy room with Theo, Broja says he sees and pulls up his glasses and informs her that the majesty her queen has arrived. With the sussy turntables now turning again, Elda is visibly taken aback since this was a surprise visit from Ira, but Theo looks like he somewhat expected the timing of Ira, so he says nothing and plays along. The two are then quick to enter the massive dining hall to join the feast made specifically for the arrival of a nobleman, where it's revealed that even Reinhardt was surprised at Ira personally visiting their household. Apparently a big feast isn't something fit for the queen of the realm, but somehow the evil queen Ira doesn't mind not being appropriately welcomed, but she's quick to smile and tells everyone not to worry since she's enjoying dinner very much. Fast forward some more cringe small talk and anxious Reinhardt eagerly asks Ira why she has decided to arrive unannounced since this is something she's never done before. After picking up a glass of happy times, Ira continues on with her clearly peaceful acting and straight up tells Reinhardt that she's here to personally congratulate him for basically becoming the next prime minister of the kingdom. However, Ira doesn't stop there and ends up dropping the bomb on the family of Reinhardt by informing them that she plans on making Richard, the youngest in their family, her future successor of the throne. Totally confused as to what just unraveled, a shocked Reinhardt gets up and asks the queen why she thinks his son is the ideal successor to her throne. At the same time, our boy Theo somewhat seems amused, even though this was his all along, but he didn't expect Ira to act so quickly, even if this meant the Lyons family will always have her back no matter what. Suddenly, as Theo is stuck trying to big brain some more chess moves 69 steps in advance like Magnus, he gets ganked by a towering Elda ordering him to explain everything, since he didn't spill the beans to her, except he spilt the milk instead. Luckily, he gets saved right in time before he could experience the wrath of Elda, all thanks to Ira who quickly pulls him privately away where the two begin talking about their plans. As Theo continues to go over his master plan with Ira, he's super ecstatic knowing that he could get her into the academy faster at this rate, so his life and Ira's will finally be spared. At the same time, Ira looks very happy as well, knowing full well that if anything happened to her then the Lioness family will be at fault.